So today I am in Muggendorf, Germany, and I am doing the uh, German Edelweiss Ruck March. So this march is uh, an event that's hosted by the German army, and you have to do 18.6 uh, miles with a ruck that weighs at least 45 pounds. And the terrain has to have an elevation change of at least 2,000 meters. Uh, so today I'm going to do this. There's probably about maybe 200 other um, U.S. service members, you know, Army, Air Force, Navy, whatever, um, that are all going to be doing this today also. So in this part of Germany is called the Frankish Schweiz, uh, which there is lots of really cool um, rock, uh, rock features and kind of like this rolling hilly landscape. It's very beautiful. Uh, so I've been here before just like for some hiking and things like that but I'm really excited to be able to do this today and I'm going to try to uh, film along the way to let you guys follow along. So this march is supposed to go through um, an area that has a cave and that, that we can go inside and check out and then it will also take us by several uh, small restaurants and stuff that we can stop at and get food and drinks along the way. In total there's not really a time limit of how how fast we have to complete this but to say generally 10 hours or less so hopefully I'm guessing around maybe like seven to eight hours to finish this and this March is starting in Muggendorf at the old train station which is now I think like a um, uh, like a nature park museum uh, but that's where it's starting and we should be stepping off here uh, at eight o'clock For this march, it was recommended to march in teams. So I did this with two other people. So our team of three, before we started, we were given a map and a pencil. One thing that was very unique about this march is that the marching route was not specifically laid out for us. And this route consisted of 24 plotted points and it ended back at the start location. So it was up to us to determine which way we wanted to go for each consecutive point. Sometimes we would march on the main roads, or farm roads, forest roads, or sometimes we were on hiking trails. Along the route, there were a few times where people chose to go different ways, and there was one time where we were just following the people in front of us, but when I pulled out the map, I realized that we were not going the most efficient way. So we ended up turning around and going a different way um, to get to the next point quicker. So that was cool part of the trail actually went through a cave so got to pull up my headlamp flashlight and navigate through the cave now we're continuing up to a, like a radio tower and I'm guessing we're probably at like eight or nine miles This was one of my favorite parts of the march. In this area, there were several large stone arches that we got, got to walk under. The trail also led to a viewpoint overlooking the river. The trail next led down to the river. The trail followed the river and then we crossed the river and started going uphill again. This would be the last hard up and downhill part of the march.
Next, we mainly marched through the beautiful farm fields from one small village to the next. It was nice to see the cute villages with their Bavarian houses and beautiful gardens. Along the route, there is a farmer who set up his grill and started selling uh, some bratwurst and some ice cold soft drinks and water. So I ended up getting a soft drink and that really helped to give me some more energy to complete the march. This is the cliff that we just slid down because we got off the trail. <laughs> So now we've made it to Kuhin Mula. This is one of the stops. It's a, like a restaurant and beer garden. I'm not sure if we'll stop and get some food or drinks, but uh, so far it's been outstandingly beautiful, so nice. Um, and I've really enjoyed this, this, this march. It has been difficult, so many hills, um, but it definitely is very beautiful. So we ended up just continuing on. We did get a few drinks uh, just to go. And now we're gonna, I think we have about maybe two hours left. Um, we're at point number 18 of 24. So hopefully about three fourths way done. And now we're just following this stream. So hopefully it should be flat for the next, uh, next few miles. At one point, the map showed a hiking trail that wasn't apparent in front of us. So we ended up just walking through a grass field to get to the next point. The last few miles of the march were on small roads by the bright yellow fields of canola. Okay, we have about two and a half kilometers left. And my feet are really feeling sore, that's for sure. But so far this has been a great, um, great day. We've had perfect weather. It's been not too hot, not too, not too cool. Um, it's been absolutely great weather. So looking forward to finishing, that, finishing this out and stopping at a restaurant to get some food. Almost done. Made it back to the town of Muggendorf. Now we gotta get back to the train station. Made it back to the train station. Now we need to check back in and see if we can pick up our certificate or see um, how all that works. So I just finished the Ruck March. It took me seven hours and 46 minutes. I think we were some of the, the people that finished um, closer to the front. And they said the fastest time today was seven hours and 15 minutes. It was a great hike. I think one thing that was so cool was just the variation in scenery. Uh, there was, we were going through farmland, through forest. There was a cave that we went through and all of the cool rock formations. Uh, it, was, it was a really, really good day. And the weather was absolutely perfect. Um, I also love that we got to go through the small quaint towns and just see um, just the little little communities. That was great. One downside was the ruck weight for this was supposed to be 45 pounds, which that's what I did. And that is very heavy. Like my back was really uh, getting sore and really hurting at the end of, end of the day. Um, but the one thing is that they did not... Uh, they did not weigh our ruck before or after, so I guess it's just on the honor system. Some people chose to do lighter weight uh, than what they um, what they put out. You know, it's 45 pounds, but it's up to you if you do this how much you want to you want to bring. Uh, but it definitely is a worthwhile experience. I would definitely recommend uh, anyone who's in the military to come and try this out to earn the Edelweiss ruck badge. So whenever we got back to the train station, we just checked in um, with the officials, gave them our information, our email, and before it started this morning, we paid uh, for the certificate and for the um, 
uh, for the the pin and so that was 15 euros I do think that uh, this uh, this Edelweiss March was had a lot more elevation than the Luxembourg March that I did last last year um, well that one was very hilly this one was even more like it was felt like it was constantly up and down for the first probably first half um, then after that it kind of leveled out uh, but I think that they tend to always use um, the same area for the Edelweiss March uh, maybe the same route one thing that was very unique was that they gave us the map and this printed map had the points that we were supposed to go to at each uh, along along the way but nobody was there to check um, to check us in at those points it was just like on the honor system and so you also didn't know exactly which way to go to get from point to point that was up to us to find you know what, what we thought was the best way so there were a few times where we maybe uh, where we got off the trail and so we had to um, kind of cut through a, a field or cut through the woods to kind of get to the trail uh, to get to the next point so it is very important to have your phone with you or some type of GPS uh, so that way you can easily navigate and get from point to point um, so luckily I had my phone and I was navigating for our team um, and you are split up into teams so we just had a team of uh, two to three people but there was lots of people that uh, lots of groups that had teams of you know 10 20 um, so that's that's something that's different uh, about this March also I think that having to navigate from point to point is something that's very unique to this uh, this March and that kind of made it more fun too because uh, you were constantly trying to figure out what is the best route to get from point one to point two and and kind of added some variability to uh, to this March it's not just following the person in front of you but you're kind of navigating and uh, using your best judgment also there were a couple um, of small towns that we passed through that did have restaurants or, or beer gardens so that was nice if you wanted to stop and get some food and drinks you could because there was not a set um, specific time limit they said generally you know get back before 10 hours um, but you can kind of take your time if you want to take it slower and enjoy it more and stop and get food and drinks you're welcome to do that or if you just want to you know get it done as soon as possible um, but I think with being such a great day uh, it was definitely a worthwhile experience. So this march was one of the marches that I had planned to complete this summer as I am preparing for the Nijmegen uh, four-day march. So that's going to be in July and that is um, four days. Each day is about 25 miles and and that is the largest marching event in the world. Um, so I think there's going to be 6,000 military personnel there and several tens of thousands of civilians. So all these marches that I'm doing are helping me prepare for that. So stay tuned for more videos about the Nijmegen and also maybe the Luxembourg Rough March. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos about hiking in Germany, ruck marches and traveling around Europe.